guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stacy. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my end of year review for kindergarten curriculum. Guys, thanks so much for coming back. If you enjoy this video, like what you see, please smash that thumbs up button and leave me a comment. And yeah, let's get started. I just put my boys to bed and so it is dark outside. I hope my lighting in here is okay and hopefully none of them will wake up. Hey guys, so I'm so excited for this video. I love doing curriculum stuff. I kind of geek out over like researching books and curriculum and stuff like that. So I have twin boys who were in kindergarten this past year and they are boys, they're very active little boys, short attention span, full of life, full of energy and love to just play and have fun and be loved on. They're the sweetest little things and I love being a mom to them. Um, I also have two other little boys. Um, one is a two year old and then I just had a baby during this past school year. So this might seem like a lot of curriculum, a lot of books, but it's because I actually had a girl that came to help teach them because of me being really sick before I had the baby and then recovering. And then I also was helping with some ministry stuff with our team here. Um, if you don't know, we are from the States, but we live overseas in Cambodia currently. Um, we have like an NGO, which is like a non-government organization here that we work with. Okay, so I had to really plan ahead, research my curriculum, and we were in the States um, about a little over a year ago. I had to buy all my curriculum that I wanted to use for this coming year, unless it was something that I could buy like the PDF, like buy and print myself. So that being said, I got plenty of like different books and curriculum. I got two different reading programs because I was unsure of myself um, because it was my first time like teaching kindergarten. And I also, my boys have two very different learning styles and I just wasn't sure what was gonna work and I didn't wanna get back over here to Cambodia and be kind of stuck with something I did not like, wasn't working. So I will explain that as we go along. So in this video, I will show you guys which books and curriculum I loved and I'll tell you one, which ones I didn't like as much and why. So this is kind of like my planner and I also have a bunch of like the kids notes and stuff in here and I'll show you more of that in just a minute. My big water bottle, which honestly I highly recommend. It has like a 64 ounce, I think. And I will try to link it below. Um, it's so awesome. It keeps ice cold water in there all day long, even here in Cambodia in the heat, in the tropical weather. So this stack here is like the main curriculum. And then this here is read alouds. This here is kind of like Bible slash character study. Um, these were just like some fun workbooks and I'll go over those. This is geography, like a big puzzle, and then some logic games and some extra that I'll explain. So very originally, I went to Timberdoodle, which is a homeschool company. You can look them up. They have a YouTube channel here also, and they kind of go through and pick out, pick out very like what they think is the best curriculum for different subjects and put them together into kits, and then you can come and buy kits. Amongst those kits, you can pick and choose what you do and don't want, and you can like sometimes swap out, like say you don't want uh, math you see instead you want like horizons math or something like that you can swap that out So I did not buy their kit because I didn't want everything in their kit I just picked and chose a couple things and I got a lot of recommendations from them This is a weekly checklist and then we just went like Bible language arts math Thinking skills history social studies science social emotional stem art and activity books and put them there and then listed each of the different things I had for each category um, and then daily, like for example, all about reading is 20 minutes and then we had five marks here for possible five days of the week. Now that did not mean that we had to do it each day. If we only got it done twice a week, if only, a lot of these, I we often end up just doing school four times a week, um, but even so we didn't necessarily always do all about reading and that was perfectly fine. So, and then this way I stuck in a pouch here so we could mark with dry erase marker each week and then erase it again if we wanted to. Even though this is a really nice schedule, we did not necessarily follow it. Um, this is just more of like a weekly, what I could do, possibilities, just reminders. Um, basically my goal was to, if we did Bible and math and reading each day or four days a week or, or even three days a week, um, and lots of reading, lots of playing, and lots of loving on them. I was really happy with that. So for math, we did the good and the beautiful math, level K, and I love, love, love this math. I actually did a whole review on that, so I will link that up above, and you guys can click on that and watch it if you want. It comes with a math kit, and each day has like a daily dose where you do um, different things. They move you through different things throughout the year. And I've heard some people say that they just skip that. If you wanna get do your lesson really fast one day, that's perfectly fine. You make the curriculum work for you. So yes, I would definitely recommend The Good and Beautiful Math. Um, it is a full curriculum. Some people think it's too wordy. Um, it has stories in it and stuff like that. My tip would be 
read the stories word for word to your kids. But then like the daily lessons, what I would normally do is pre-read it before I had the boys come for school. It would just take like less than five minutes for me to quick read over the lesson. And then when my twins came in, I would try to paraphrase what it was. And I felt like I could keep their attention a lot better that way. If I sat there and read it to my twins, I would they would end up just like picking on each other and I'd lose them really fast. And so I did find that it worked a lot better if I just paraphrased it to them and kept eye contact to be able to keep their interest a lot better that way. So that is a tip if um, you're doing this, and I think especially if you're teaching more than one kid at a time, like I did head twins. Yeah. And my boys love, love, love the kit, all the manipulatives, the hands-on, it was like playing. Okay, so next of all, I am gonna show you guys all about reading. We really like this curriculum, it's very hands-on. So it comes with a the activity guide for the student and then also the teacher's manual. So it also comes with flashcards and I keep mine in old shoe box because I didn't buy their box. So and then um, it also comes with letter tiles which you put on a, magnet on a magnetic board. You can use like a white dry erase board but my husband made this nice one for me which I'm thankful for that. Um, and it's supposed to, the letters are supposed to be like an alphabetic order at the top and then we the boys are currently also learning these consonant blends. Um, they're currently learning like compound words like sunset and so you can pull the letters around and build the words. So it's very hands-on. So one thing I like about All About Reading is that it's a phonetically based program and they're not focusing on sight words. They have sight words in there because it helps the reader to be able to read uh, a slightly more interesting story faster. And but a lot of it is based on focus on phonetics and I really, really like that, appreciate that. Another thing I really like about All About Reading is it comes with lots of different games and I, put, I saved some of the games that we really like and I wanna reuse in a packet like this. Um, so it has like lots of different games. You're not just sitting with pencil and paper. This is cheese, these are eggs. You pretend like you're flying them, frying them. You have to use a flipper and flip them. You make a lot of different flip books. This is one we need to do. It also comes with three readers, which my boys really enjoyed. We're currently on Cop of the Cat, which is the third book. And so, yeah, we're not quite done with this one yet, but we uh, keep chugging away at it. Um, we're supposed to be going on furlough this summer, but we don't know when because of the whole illness thing. So we're gonna just keep slowly chugging away at it and see when we get done. If we don't finish it this year, that's fine. We'll just pick it up again in first grade next year. One thing I like like with the flashcards is not to just like drill them over and over instead of make games like they slap the board, use a fly flatter, swatter, swap the correct word, put the flashcards on the steps, they have to jump up and down the steps as they say them, um, write the words on our, on our dry erase board and they have to slap it with their hands to see if they can beat their brother. One thing I do really like about All About Reading is they recommend setting the timer for 20 minutes and when the timer goes just stopping. Um, no matter where you're at in the lesson, the next day just picking up there again. So in a week, we might only cover two lessons because it takes us two days to do one lesson and we do school maybe four days that week. Um, and I really like that because it's really hard for my boys to keep their attention longer than that. And if I do force them to stay there longer than that, they don't remember what they learned anyway. So I'd say 20 minutes at the most, if anything less than that. Yeah. And then if there's one thing I don't like is sometimes in the activity book, they'll have a page like this where they're supposed to practice reading the words. And this is just like, it's too much. It's overwhelming when my boys see this page full of words. So what I'll normally do is go through and circle like five words. And then they have to just read those five words and that's it. So yeah, that's all about reading level one. I do recommend it. All right, and like I mentioned, I had gotten two language art programs or like learning to read programs. The other one was CLE, their learning to read program. Um, and I got like all of the, all 10. There's 10 little books like this, they're really thin little ones. There is two teacher's manuals for um, this program also. If you're gonna get this program, I do recommend getting the teacher's manual. It has, especially if you don't have much training and experience in teaching kids how to read, um, it tells you word for word what to say and it has a lot of like ideas and suggestions. Um, my only complaint about this program is it is that it is meant for a classroom setting and so I would say it has some busy work. There's a lot in there. This here, it is good to take note, it is meant for a first grade program. It is meant for kids who do not go to kindergarten, just come to first grade in like a traditional Mennonite school. They often don't have kindergarten. Um, and so keep that in mind that like with my boys, at the beginning of kindergarten, they were five years old, it, it moved pretty quickly for them. And it was a lot of just sitting and writing with a pencil, like not much hands-on, not much interactive at all. Um, that would be my only drawback. So what we did this year is they did the first four books of this set, which is basically introducing the sounds of the alphabet and all different like um, worksheets to go with that. And then after that, it moved on to introducing like the silent E, the long and short vowels, and then, um, which was fine, but it moved really quickly for my boys and they were getting confused. So I decided just to hit pause on that and we'll pick it up again next year in first grade. Um, so that being said, that 
all that reading was my first choice and this will be my second choice. My son Zadok, he loved these. He would beg to do the pink book, which he calls these the pink book. And let me show you. So this one here we started doing, this is light unit 106, and we started doing it and it was moving too quickly and they weren't able to keep up. So my son Zadok, one thing he really liked was these little like dot things where you have to copy them. He just thought those were so fun. They loved them, both of them. I think it's a really good program, especially for a classroom, especially for a teacher who doesn't have experience or maybe much training, or it is meant for six and seven year olds, like a first grader. Um, it would de so it would definitely depend on where your student was at, if they were ready for that faster pace or not. Okay, so next of all on my stack was Explode the Code. And so this is the teacher's guide for levels A, B, and C, and this is what Timberdoodle recommended for kindergarten. So we did these three, it's get ready for the code, get set for the code, and go for the code. I'll show you inside of these in just a minute. And then we also are currently working on Explode the Code. Ending because of the whole COVID thing, when we go back to the States, um, until then we'll probably just slowly keep working at this, just because it's fun, my boys enjoy it, it gives them something to do. So this is get ready for the code, the book A. And so it's basically like introducing your letter sounds. This could even be a preschool, even before kindergarten. Here you're just tracing, supposed to color the T, here's like letter T, and you just circle all the T's. Over here you circle all the T's. Um, yeah, very simple, very basic. So that's what the first three are. They're introducing the sounds of the alphabet. And then Explode the Code, um, level one, I would say is like phonics and spelling, kind of. It's usually pretty independent work. Okay, so for example, they have to read the sentence, the hat is fat or the bat is fat, and then mark the correct one, whatever the picture is. Um, over here, they had to write the word. Here, like letter A, which one has the short A sound in it? All of these are short A. Over here is fan, and I have to just X the correct word, the same word over here. Um, here's fan, here's man, so the circle, M N, and write the word man. And yeah, it just continues on like that. And I would recommend Explode the Code. A, B, and C, and maybe one and one and a half for kindergarten. Okay, next of all, what is handwriting without tears? And we finished this really early on in the year. Um, it's just basic handwriting, it's a pretty thin book and so it doesn't take very long and I would recommend it. Okay, next of all is a little set called Developing the Early Learner. Learner. And this it was recommended by Timberdoodle. Um, this is like, Timberdoodle came up with their own parent guide because sometimes the instructions in these books here weren't very clear. And so this is, I do recommend getting a teacher's guide through Timberdoodle for this. Um, and this is basically, foundational skills for a successful reading. And I think I saw that, that for this coming year, they recommended it for preschool even. Um, so it's pretty easy for kindergarten. It is pretty easy for my boys and we are almost done with it. We're on the last book about halfway through. And it basically is what it says exactly, pre-reading skills. And it's just a fun little thing for them to do. So let me just show you a couple pages in this book four that we haven't done yet. They're just simple black and white pages. Like here's a maze. They often have you uh, do sequencing and sometimes they'll have you do rhyming, um, stuff like that. Next of all was Bee's History of Me, and this is a really thin little book. And the um, boys got through this really early on in the year. And it's basically a ball of yarn representing time, and use it as you unroll it, you just like um, go down like the child's the history of the child's life. They have you do fun little projects like this, um, where you made a timeline of the child's life, like when mom and I got married, when the when the they were born, the twins were born, and up until where they are now, which they're six years old. So yeah, not very long. Uh, they talk about like the history of Christmas, the history of Thanksgiving, a couple things like that. And yeah, I would recommend it. It's a simple, sweet little book appropriate for kindergarten. Okay, next of all is Geography, and I would recommend this. It is Skill Sharpeners, grade K. And this just talks about like basic map skills, projects and activities, and it's a, like a colorful, bright book. And um, my boys enjoy this, and I will be getting like level one for next year. So along with Geography, Timberdoodle also recommended Usborne's Around the World Maze Book. And it's just mazes from all around the world. And Timberdoodle recommends to actually do them and use it as like something that you would be consumable. But a lot of them we just did with our finger. I think there was one or two that they did do with the pencil then. But that's all right. Um, my boys love mazes and so this was really fun for them. Timberdoodle also recommends this big puzzle. Um, one thing it does say for ages four plus, but my boys do need help with it. One thing that's really great is that each piece is shaped like the country that it's in. And this is expensive, but it was really good quality. Like the pieces are like thick cardboard and so it's gonna last a long time. So in addition to what was recommended by Timberdoodle for Geography, I also picked up this from Masterbooks. It's Children's Atlas of God's World. So this was just fun to look at. We talk about different countries. Because my boys are third culture kids and they do travel internationally, um, they understand and have questions about different countries. One thing I really like about this book is it has biomes of the world and all the different biomes. So that's fun to talk about since we do live like in a rainforest area, but we travel to America where there are seasons. Um, yeah, fun. 
And then I had this book up there, Language Geography. It's also maybe a little bit social skills, but this was recommended by Tim Purdue. It's called This Is How We Do It. And this is just like a picture book, but it follows the lives of seven different kids through from around the world through their day and it shows like what they eat for breakfast, what kind of school they go to, what they eat for lunch. Um, this is how I spell my name. Um, and it's really, I'd highly recommend this book for any like kids, third culture kids, um, or yeah, just for any kids. Show them there's a bigger world out there than the one that they know. Okay, next of all, I'm gonna talk about Spelling UC Level A and the teacher's manual. This one, I don't know how highly I would recommend it. Um, I think in level grade one, like level B and on, I think it's, I've heard it's really good. For level A, it basically, it ends up being tons of blanks like this where you just give the child like different words and they try to sound them out phonetically and write them. Um, in the beginning, in the beginning it had like all the different letters of the alphabet and more like practice different things which was really good, I like that part. This part back here, so it starts out with three letters, three blocks, and then it moves on to four letter words. Level A I didn't necessarily love, but I liked it, it was okay. And then last of all on my stack is Exploring the Building Blocks of Science, and this was basically a big coloring book. Um, and so we ended up doing maybe half of it. So what we're doing now pretty much, I would not necessarily recommend this. Um, in the beginning, it started out really good talking about atoms and having different activities and stuff for you to do, but then it quickly moved on to, do you live in a city? Color the picture, circle yes or no. Do you live in the country? Color the picture, circle yes or no. Um, so what we ended up doing is for some of the different things, we would just look them up on YouTube and watch a video to discuss it more. But then once I quit kind of doing this book, um, I did like interest-led science. So kids, kids at the age of five and six years old are really full of questions. So what we're doing now for science is kind of just interest-led. Then we, I'll try to answer the question. We'll have a discussion about it. We might look up a YouTube video. When we go to the library, we might pick up books about that topic. And they love learning about animals and so we'll often like, especially dinosaurs. So we'll often like pick up books in the library about dinosaurs and study that. Also on YouTube, they love watching Wild Kratts, which is a lot about animals and um, really educational for them. So, okay, so that there's kind of the main stuff we did. The next main thing was Bible. This here is my stack of books. The first is the Jesus Storybook Bible. Um, every story was for his name. And at the beginning of the school year, it was a little bit above them, but now it is definitely, they definitely can get it and they enjoy the stories. We read through the whole thing more than like one and a half times probably, I would say. Um, this one here, I do recommend. It's The Biggest Story, and I had bought. So in Cambodia, it can be hard to find English print books, especially Christian ones. It's this I bought from a friend that was leaving, um, and this is a really good story. It has really neat artwork, and then also the language they use is kind of the language I would use so like if I was speaking directly to them, trying to tell them a story. So I really like the way they explain the gospel. This one here is God's, God's Very Good Idea. And they have like a whole series of these. This is the only one we have. I'd love to someday get the other ones, but I highly recommend it, especially again for third culture kids, but for anybody really. And it's just talking about how God made us all different, different hair, different skin, different personalities, different likes and dislikes. But he loves us all. We need to treat each other equally and kindly. And one day, hopefully we can all be in heaven together. All the different nationalities. A friend gave this one to me. It's called The Children's Book of Virtues by William J. Bennett. Um, and this one's really good. It has like poems and stories. Um, I like that the artwork features different nationalities, also Asian because we live in an Asian country. So I really appreciate that. Um, some of the stories in here are folk stories. One of the stories I think was talking about some different gods. That, that should not scare you as a parent. Instead, that should be a grounds for you to open up discussion and talk with your kid, of course, according to the appropriate age level that they're at. But yeah. So in addition to doing these for Bible, we also did a YouTube, um, a lot of different like Bible stories, videos on there, and also we would do songs and a lot of different like motion songs. Um, the teacher that came and taught the boys, she had them working on memorizing different verse for every letter of the alphabet, like for letter A, they had a verse, letter B, they had a verse. Mm -hmm. And when I started teaching, I left the ball drop on that. It was one thing I what I need to pick back up again to work on so they don't forget. They had like little hand motions and stuff to go with their verses to help them remember it. I thought that was really good. This was also from their teacher, Miss Erica. She had them write um, different people's names on here, like grandma and grandpa and granny, different people like that. And then we'd have prayer time. They'd pick one stick and pray for that person um, as a way to help teach them how to pray. Okay, the next I always like this stack of read aloud. So these two I'm still currently working on. I'm just gonna be completely honest here. Insect Invaders is the Magic School Bus. And then also, this is by Scholastic, Secret Agent. Okay, I'm gonna pull the camera over here just so I can go through this stack quickly. So we're still working on these two. Um, we read Who Were the Right Brothers? We read Nate Saint. This was one we read at bedtime. Okay, so the next three books we did with our homeschool group and then did like a fun book club party at the end. 
So this is Charlie and Chocolate Factory, the worst, best Christmas, Christmas pageant ever. Charlotte's Web. Um, this is one that I read to them. I don't know how to say it. Lofcado. But it's by Shel Silverstein, mm -hmm. a famous author. He wrote a lot of poems and stuff like that, which I'm hoping to get one of his poem books for next year. But anyway, this book is really good for third culture kids. I bought it from someone that was leaving Cambodia here. And um, it's basically about this lion who ends up not fitting in the jungle and not fitting in the human world. And I think kids who have lived many different places can often feel that way. Um, and so it's something that my kids can maybe relate to. And this is just a classic. It's Mike Mulligan and more. It has these three stories in it. Let's see, what are they called? Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel, the little house, Katie in the big snow, Maybell in the cable car. And these are just really good classic stories that for some reason kids this age just love, especially Mike Mulligan. It just like draws them in. Um, this is by National Geographic Kids, Little Kids, First Big Book of How. And I bought this again from another family friend here who we're leaving. My kids are used to saying lots of goodbyes already at this age, which is kind of sad. Anyway, this book is just full of bright, colorful pictures, questions, games, illustrations. This would also kind of be considered science, just all kinds of fun things. In the morning, what I want to do is like just open up this book and go over like a two page spread like this. Um, and then the next day, pick it up and go over the next two page spread. This is a game. So we maybe on this day would do four pages, depending. Yeah, it just depends what it is. Um, a page like this, we would just do two pages because it takes a bit to go over all of that. And then this one here kind of goes with math. I talked about this the other week, um, counting to 100, and it just gives you, it's an Osborne book. Um, on day like one, you have like one moon, and then it goes up, up, up. And what I really liked for on days when we counted to 100, it had it in groups of 10, like 10 stars, 20, 30, 40, to help them learn to count by tens. The last group has nine, and then this is like 100. And so it's really good visual for them to learn to count by tens, which is something they do in the Good and Beautiful Math. I love okay. Okay, and then this here is a stack of like activity books. This was given to us from a lady from our church back home. Her name is here, and I just put it there. So when I see this book, I'm reminded of her. My boys love, love, love this. This was also part of like our morning time, morning basket. Um, so what it is, is you fold the book like this, and you have some different questions, like put these qu put these pictures in the right order, which number comes first, match the uppercase letter with the lowercase letter, and then on this side is the answers. So you fold it like that. And so I usually have one boy do one page. And we went through this book twice this year, and my boys loved it. And so I will hopefully be getting the next one, um, the first grade one for next year. Um, these two books were given by their grandma for them to do. She sent them over. So thank you, Alma, if you're watching this. The boys really enjoyed these. They went through them in no time flat. It's bright, colorful, easy pages, and it gave the boys a lot of confidence because it was easy for them, and they were like, oh, I can do this. This is, you know, fun. This was by Kuman, and at the beginning of the year, I actually had a couple other Kuman ones, like a maze book. They went through it really fast, and I don't have it anymore to show you guys, but this was number games, one to 70, um, and it does say for ages three, four, and five, it is hard for my boys who are now six, um, so I would say, yeah, this is definitely a little bit on the hard side, especially at the end. Yeah, you're going to number 70, and that was hard for them. They were getting confused up here because the numbers are really close together, and sometimes it's hard to tell what dot goes with what number. And so I had to help them a lot. And then these over here, they just quit doing. They weren't fun for them anymore because um, it was, yeah, like I said, it was almost too hard for them. This was like art, finger paint, fingerprint and draw. This was a neat book. Um, so like it tells you to dip it in an ink pad and make these different, all these different animals. And we would do it on separate pieces of paper. That way we can use this again other years. This was really fun for art. For art, we also did, on YouTube, we did, did a lot of Kids Art Hub, which is like directed drawing, and my kids love it. We especially did those on like holidays, like Christmas, Easter, we just did one. And usually I or Dewey would sit down and do it with them, which I think they enjoy too. This was just another book on Timberdoodle's site, Neverboard Kid Book for ages five and six, is Evan Moore book. Um, I would recommend this, it's really colorful and bright. My kids have done all the pages except for the ones, and I marked them, where you have to cut stuff out. They go in mood. Sometimes they really like to cut stuff out and then other times they just don't want to. So if they strike in the mood where they want to cut stuff, I will send them to this book and they can do it. And if they never get around to it, I'm okay with that too. We did the parts that we liked and really loved out of this book already. Um, I just have two things left here. So these are logic games and these were recommended by Timberdoodle. Um, this is Smart Farmer and it's a logic game. This is Little Red Riding Hood. It's a one player game for ages four to seven. Smart Farmer is for ages five plus. And this is Bug Bugzel, I guess is how you say it. Um, this is recommended for three plus. So this is a fat brain toy co game. What I would do is I would tell the boys they have to do two challenges from one of these. 
uh, usually each afternoon. It was kind of a fun thing for them to do, but also it was fun, but also gave them something to do. Okay, so of these three logic games, um, I liked all of them. If I had to pick one, I'd say I'd recommend Smart Farmer just because it's so cute. Um, and then also last, um, just for like fun at around Christmas time, I had gotten the winter pack, Math and Literature Kindergarten, no prep pack from the Mofat Girls. Um, she creates curriculum, I think for early elementary, and a lot of it is really fun, hands-on, interactive stuff. I got the no prep because sometimes I get tired of the stuff online that you have to like print and cut out and laminate and cut out again. I get tired of doing that. So I like the no prep packs and it's basically just worksheets. Um, some of it's math, some is reading, some sight words, and it's depending what mood my boys are in, they can really enjoy doing a worksheet. And if this is not something I require them to do, but it's just like for fun. If they want to, this is like look, and then they have to color the same ones that are the same. If you're looking for more resources, check out Mofat Girls Online. She's got all kinds of stuff, including like whole year long curriculums. So I know this might look like a lot. One thing to keep in mind is it usually takes my boys about two hours from start to finish till they have everything done. So yeah, it doesn't take real long. We keep it moving. Um, I don't believe this age they should be doing school for hours and hours on end. I believe they should have lots of free time to play, to chase uh, wonder and spark and interest. Um, our boys spend a lot of time with like building stuff like Legos, a lot of time running around, and we do not, I wish I could say they spend a lot of time in nature in the woods. We have no woods, no yard, so they are in the house a lot, which is also why I end up reading to them a lot. Um, in the months of February and March, each one I did a challenge to myself and I read them 100 picture books each month. Um, most months I don't quite read that much, um, but we do do a lot of reading. Um, another thing I would recommend is these triangle shaped pencils with little grips on them. It's by Farber Castle, a jumbo grip. I'll try to link it down below, but it helps with that, teaching them to have that tripod hold on their pencils. And a little bit bigger and chunky. Um, also, one book I don't have is the Lift the Flap book from Usborne About Your Bodies. Um, my boys, we have that book at our English Center, and so we'll bring it home occasionally for them to look at. My boys love that book, and it is recommended by Timber Doodle, and that is a really good resource for like health and learning about your body and stuff at this age, how your body works, how you, what it looks like inside, stuff like that. Um, another thing I recommend for kindergarten or just like early elementary is dot markers. My two-year-old love these. My Kindergartners love these. They're just stop markers to use. They do all kinds of stuff with them. Um, I also have glitter glue here. Another thing up there, I have like dry erase markers, um, markers for glass, and also paint markers. All different kinds of things like that. My kids at this age, it's really fun for them to explore with and draw with and have fun with, be creative. And also this was a birthday gift for Zeke, is a sewing kit. And I know it's not a very boy thing, but it was animals. It doesn't look like a very boy thing, but it was animals in here that it was a little kit, everything you needed to sew. Um, these really cute little, like, here's a cat. And he loved it. He needed a little bit of help with it, but I would recommend stuff like that. Even for boys, it's good for them to learn how to do it. And it's something fun for them to do in the afternoons. So I think that's about all I have. If this looks like a lot of stuff, um, for me, if we were having like a busy or a hard day, the most important things were Bible, math, and reading, and then just like reading storybooks, picture books. So keep that in mind. Um, we did not do all this stuff every day. This was just like resources we pulled from and had fun with. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this curriculum review. And I'm having fun thinking about and planning what I'm going to use for next year. I know for me, I love, love, love watching curriculum reviews. They tell me a lot about what's good curriculum and what isn't. It's a lot of fun to research. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and see you guys again next week on Friday. Bye!